Now we'll go to David Martin at the Pentagon with the president's military options. The Pentagon increased spy flights over Iraq using high-flying Global Hawk drones as it developed plans for airstrikes designed to blunt the insurgent march south and, in the words of one officer, give the Iraqi government a chance to catch its breath. At the same time, the aircraft carrier Bush is expected to be ordered into the Persian Gulf where it would join ships armed with cruise missiles. B-1 bombers capable of carrying more than 100,000 pounds of satellite-guided bombs are already stationed in the country of Qatar. Despite all the firepower, officials said there are not many lucrative targets when bombing an insurgent force of fewer than 10,000, which communicates over cell phones, travels in pickup trucks, and could be hard to distinguish from civilians. In addition to the danger of civilian casualties, airstrikes could drag the U.S. into the midst of a civil war between Sunnis and Shiites, although the president has ruled out sending in ground troops. It will take the aircraft carrier about 30 hours to reach the northern Persian Gulf, which is the ideal location for launching strikes into Iraq. But the timing of any strikes could also depend on how fast the insurgents march toward Baghdad. And David, here's a question. The U.S. spent more than $25 billion training and equipping the Iraqi army. Why is it collapsing? First and foremost, Scott, is that promotions under Prime Minister Maliki were based not on military ability, but on personal loyalty to him, and the inevitable result was a poorly led army. Second, all American training ended two and a half years ago when the last U.S. troops left, and the Iraqi army has been going steadily downhill ever since, both in its ability to conduct operations and in the morale of its soldiers. David Martin at the Pentagon, thanks.